Hi everybody, um, this is Dave Moraine and welcome to the uh, Math Notations Vids YouTube channel. Uh, this is another in a series of videos for students, teachers, anyone who's a lover of mathematics, has a passion of math, or wants to uh, see how things are done and how to justify certain results in mathematics. This is not a tutorial. This is more designed for advanced middle school students who have some knowledge of uh, algebra, math team, math club students, uh, high school students with uh, a knowledge of uh, algebra 1, algebra 2, uh, pre-calculus, and it actually touches on some calculus as well. Um, I call this the algebraic genius of Euler. I may change the name of that in my blog post, but uh, what we're looking at here is a problem that uh, defied some of the greatest minds in the 18th century until uh, Euler cracked the problem in the 1700s, and that is <clears throat> the uh, sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive integers they knew at that time that this sum has a value uh, from what they knew about series that never ended, infinite series of terms. Um, and this infinite series, the concern was, well, if it has a value, what is that number? And uh, Euler was able to show that it's equal to pi squared over 6. Pi is... Um, well, we just had Pi Day um, a week or so ago, and it seems to me that uh, it's only appropriate to uh, talk about this some more. This was also motivated <clears throat> by one of my faithful readers, Professor Jablo. He mentioned that this is worth discussing, and in fact, he uh, gave an outline of how Euler derived this, and I'm going to uh, build on that, flesh it out a little more, a little more detail and some background so that <clears throat> students can appreciate it or anyone else. All right, we're going to uh, begin with some background that is needed for polynomials. So let's look at a function. If you're a middle schooler and you're not sure what functions are yet, th just think of it in this case as a polynomial x minus 2 times x minus 3. I'm writing it in factored form. So it's easy to see what um, the zeros of the function are. Zeros is another name for x-intercepts of a graph. And in fact, we see the zeros are 2 and 3 here. And the graph of this uh, quadratic function, well, it would have a y-intercept and two x-intercepts. If I multiply this out, if I expand it, x squared minus 5x plus 6. So this would be the y-intercept, 0, 6. And then you would have x-intercepts at 2 and 3. <clears throat> it's important for algebra students to understand that knowing the zeros of a function does not mean <clears throat> you necessarily uh, know what the function is. It, we say it's not uniquely determined because it's certainly easy to find another quadratic function, in fact infinitely many, uh, which have the same zeros. Let's say we want a, another one that has a y-intercept of uh, 1 with the same uh, x-intercept, so it'll open up uh, wider. And here are the same x-intercepts, and the blue graph would be a, a very rough sketch of a different parabola with the same zeros, or the same x-intercepts, I should say. So, the uh, new function, the blue one, um, in order to make the y-intercept 1, I'll multiply it by a constant. Now this changes the function. And I could distribute that. 
and write it backwards so we get 1 minus 5 over 6 x squared plus 1 over 6 uh, x squared okay and um, this function again has the same zeros as the original one all right uh, we could also write this in factored form uh, which I could get directly from the original one if I um, multiply the first factor by negative one half and the second factor by negative one third and distribute I will get it in a special form 1 minus x over 2 I hope you can see that times 1 minus x over 3 now take a good look at this because this uh, normalized form as we call it uh, has an interesting property again it has the same x-intercepts as the original graph uh, but here the roots of the equation if you set that equal to zero are two and three and look where you see the two and the three so it's one minus the variable x divided by the first root or zero or x-intercept times one minus x divided by the other zero remember this form Euler um, capitalized on this form and with his genius of saying well, why can't we do it for more factors and then he went beyond polynomials and looked at what uh, you might think of as infinite polynomials polynomials that have an infinite number of zeros that's where we're going with this um, I'm going to go to about uh, eight or nine minutes on part one so this is part one of the algebraic genius of uh, Euler and I'll erase that now now I know you're wondering where this is going and if you're not totally bored yet and have turned off this video <clears throat> then I'm sure you want to see uh, some connection to pi <clears throat> well uh, calculus was known at that time to Euler from Newton and Leibniz and he knew there was an intimate connection between pi and the trig functions so he looked at sine x and he looked at the uh, series representation of sine x for those of you who do not know what that means well later on in math you will learn that sine can be described by a polynomial but a, spe a special polynomial what's the degree of this polynomial what do these exclamation points mean well first of all the degree is infinite if you want to call it that meaning that the terms never end so we call this an infinite series of terms and up here I was using summation notation for infinite series so just as this is an infinite series that never ends of fractions um, we have something like that here so there's some connection already although pi is not involved at this moment and so on and it was known that uh, sine x can be represented by this infinite polynomial if you will and in fact you could replace x by any uh, <clears throat> real number you want <clears throat> so I'm gonna stop here and we'll go to part two and see how he used this uh, Taylor series or Maclaurin series that's what these are called and again you learn this in calculus but for the students who are not up to this just accept for the moment that this is a way to represent sine x and it is kind of interesting you'll notice that all the exponents are odd and algebra, algebra and pre-calculus students uh, may remember that sine is an odd function when you get to the trig unit and you could actually develop a lot of properties of the sine function from this but I'll stop here and we'll go to part two